Welcome back to the channel. I have two things that I'm gonna be doing today. I'll show you what these are. I finally received the oxygen sensor that I ordered for the car. This is the upstream sensor. This is what's causing my check engine light according to what it's saying. So it's this one that we're gonna be replacing. We'll have to remove this heat shield to get it out of here. I went with a Denso. This is a, it's a good brand that I know it'll be fine. Here's the part number. Um, and again, this is for the upstream. There's also another one on the bottom down there. That one is gonna be your downstream one. So just make sure you know what one it is that you need before you order it. Um, and also go with a good brand. So Denso is a good brand. Um, Bosch is another good brand. Or you can buy OEM. These are a little bit pricey, but I'm not gonna put anything cheap on this car. Also, I finally did receive a package back from Glowshift. So if you didn't know previously, I've been having quite a few issues with getting this air fuel ratio gauge to turn on. I've ordered two brand new kits from, from Glowshift and neither one of those kits was able to power up my gauge. I was not, I was seeing power up to the gauge, but the gauge was not turning on or doing anything. So after talking with them and trying to figure it out, troubleshoot it, I ended up sending one of these kits back to them to have them look it over, test it, make sure everything was good and send it back out. I've just now received it. It doesn't look like they replaced anything or did anything. It kind of looks like they just sent basically the same thing back that I sent them. Hopefully that's not the case, but we're gonna hook this up, see if this works. Um, it should work. I don't know what they did with it, but um, hopefully this will finally work and take care of that issue. I'm gonna start by testing this gauge out and we're just gonna hook up this kit to the battery. I have everything still in my car completely set up from the other kit that I have. Everything is all hooked up in here. We're just gonna leave this right now and I need to see if this gauge even works before we go through the trouble of hooking up all this stuff. So let's just test this on our battery. We have everything pretty much hooked up here. I'm gonna show you real quick, give you a quick run through of what we have. So we have the gauge here with the gauge harness that's clipped into the back. That's going into our little module box right here. So there's the one for the gauge. And then we have the other one right here for the power. So this is the one with all the wires right here. All we're gonna do is take the yellow and the red wire, connect those together, touch them to the positive side of the battery, and then the black will go to the negative side of the battery. Once you do that, you should have power to this gauge. We're gonna find out here really quickly if they did anything or not. You do not need to hook in the actual gauge sensor part on here for this to see power. So we're not gonna hook this one in. You don't need to, just for testing purposes. We're just gonna touch these and I'll show you what that's gonna look like here in a second. Just to show you that we are connected up here, I have both the yellow and red wire with a pair of alligator clips going to the positive side of the battery. All I need to do is take my other wire here, tester wire, touch that little piece right there on the black piece to my black part, the negative side of the battery, and this gauge should light up. All right, let's find out. Uh, we can see the gauge here just a little bit. I'll try to position it so you can see it better. Might be a little better. Let's try it out here. There we go. That now has power. This is the same exact test that I had did on the two previous brand new kits that I had, and I was not getting power to this gauge when doing this. Um, so it's, it's pretty bad that you get two brand new gauges from a company and two of them do not work. I sent it back. Clearly they did something because it is working now. I'm gonna have to remove my entire kit, the old previous one from the car. I don't want any of that stuff ran on there. And we're just gonna start fresh with all this brand new wiring. And this whole brand new kit, we're gonna put this in the car. The only part that goes through the actual firewall in this air fuel ratio kit is this right here that goes to the sensor part, which will go into the exhaust once I install my, my downpipe for it. So we're gonna remove our old one that's just hanging out in here. We'll get this out of here because I'm gonna replace every single one of these, like I said. Uh, I'm just gonna need to snip some of these zip ties here because I had it mounted up to the firewall. We'll snip these off and then we'll pull the rest of this through once we unclip it from the module box inside the car. Out with the old. The engine bay is all done and secured up right now. We're just working inside of the car. So we have our other two wires to connect and hook up here. Um, one goes to the gauge from the module box and then the other one will need to get wired into 
um, the accessory wire, power wire, and the ground that I already have set up down here. So let's get this old one out of here, disconnect everything, and install the new stuff. I now have everything wired into my new box here, have the wires tapped into my existing wiring that was correct. My wiring was correct all along. I was pretty confident that that was not the issue with any of this. Um, so trust your gut, stay with it. I even tested, um, I did this off camera, but I tested both of these gauge kits out on other cars too as well, just to verify it and make sure. And that's how I knew that there was something up. There was something else that was going on. It was not this car or the wiring on it. It was something with the gauges. So this last part here, we just need to clip in our new gauge right here. Let's get this in here. This should power up. I'm pretty confident with this now, so let's give it a go. Boom. That is what it looks like when this gauge is functioning and we are actually getting power to it. So finally, we're here. Uh, it's not going to read anything right now. It's just gonna, I don't really know what it's gonna do, but it's the sensor is not hooked up yet. So once that gets hooked up, it'll start reading accurately. We are done. With this gauge right now, I'll just need to tuck this wiring back up and get everything nice and tidied. And then we can go ahead, go back to the engine bay and we can replace our O2 sensor that's bad next. To get to this sensor right here, we'll need to take off this top piece right here. And then it looks like this heat shield cover. This whole cover on the front is in two pieces. So luckily we shouldn't have to remove this bottom part. Only this top part, which is a couple of 10 millimeter bolts that are just around this piece. So let's start with this top one right here though. 13 millimeter. Wow. Now we move on to all of our 10 millimeters. So one here, one here, one there. And then we have these ones down here. These ones are the nuts. So it looks like five in total. You might wanna, it's not a bad idea to spray some WD-40 on these because they do get really hot. Uh, I'm just gonna use a ratchet. So, cause I don't wanna break them with my impact. So let's knock these out. Here it is. I did spray this down with just some WD-40 just to hopefully break it loose so it's not super tight in here. We can get that out. Last thing we'll need to get out is this wiring harness. So we'll just follow this all the way down and I can see it snakes somewhere down in there. That's where there's gonna be a clip down there. So we'll need to release that from the clip. Other than that, we can go ahead and get a wrench or an oxygen socket on this and pop this loose. I was able to get the sensor off. There's just one clip down there. And then it goes, this little groove channel here, it goes inside of a bracket piece and that's where it mounts. And I also did break this loose. So now we can just twist this all the way out and we'll pop this new one in. We can compare it with our new one we're gonna be putting in. So this is the old one right here on the left. It is pretty white on the tip for I'd say probably like half of this is white and then the other half or the other quarter almost uh, is a little bit darker in color. So it is a little bit miscolored. Other than that, it doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape. I was expecting it to be clogged up. And then obviously here's a new one. In this kit for this new one too, for this Denso, we do get a little bit of grease. We'll pull this out here. So this is like some anti-seize. We're gonna put this on the threads um, right in there. So that way this won't get seized up in there. Tighten this up with a wrench because that's all I have. I am underneath the car right now and you can see this is kind of where the, the harnesses are for the O2 sensors. Here's the part right here that we just put down that we're going to need to thread in. So you see there's this bracket right, 
right here, this is what this little groove goes into that's on this. So there's a little channel here. I'll pop it in there and I'll show you what it looks like. Just like so. So now it, I had to hit it, I had to tap it in with a screwdriver. This orange harness clip right here just goes onto it. And you wanna make sure that there's that little tab on the outside for this piece to go, for the harness to go on this correctly. So I'll clip these on. Uh, I'm sorry I can't show you. I'm holding this with one hand and I'm underneath the car in a pretty tight spot. That now is how it should look like when it's all set and done. And that little tab on top, that yellow one, you'll just need to push that down in order to make sure it stays in place. O2 sensor is all hooked up and good to go. Since we are down here, I was just looking at doing something else. I'm going to be adjusting the wastegate on my turbo actuator here and making sure that it is preset to where I want it. I just uh, sprayed some lubricant on that nut right there that we're going to have to loosen. So I'm going to break this nut free right here so that way we can move this around. It's just a 10 millimeter. We'll get it on here. There we go. Now that's broke free. Just back it off a little bit. turns back just like so okay now we need to pull this arm off of this little rod right here there's a pin on the back side um, it's more of a clip it's like a C clip basically we're gonna have to take a screwdriver get behind that top part right there and pull up on it so that way we can get this slotted this part out be super careful not to lose this clip because it is super small and it's gonna be hard to get another one so i'm just gonna be extremely careful with this prying this out of here okay so it did fall down but i see it it's right there so we'll just get that with a magnet and pull it out here here's this clip so save this do not lose it next we're going to take this part and just put a screwdriver right here and separate it from the actuator. Come right off just like so. So to set your preset, what you will do is you're going to take this piece right here and you're going to loosen this as many turns as it takes to fit over this little sprocket here. So you can see this moves back and forth with this all the way back like it is right now. So it moves back and forth. You want it all the way this way. You're gonna loosen this until it falls right on that without pulling this rod out at all. So we'll loosen it as many turns as it takes. I'm gonna show you real quick what I'm talking about. So now this falls. So I loosened it, loosened it. When we take this, I'm not pulling this or doing anything. All I'm doing is just putting it down to go on top of here. It falls right into place over this actuator. That's how you know um, this is zeroed out right now. What we're going to adjust this to is we're going to adjust this to uh, six millimeters to the left. So every turn is going to be one millimeter. So a full turn is going to be like this. So this is half a turn and then this is one turn. So since we're doing six millimeters, I'm going to start at zero again. We'll have to do 12 total turns on this. Um, so six full turns and 12 half turns to tighten this and then we can go ahead pull this over and put it on that and that is the preload that you want set for your actuator once you get to 12 we're going to take a pair of pliers to pull this over and then we can get it on top of that rod there i'm going to do this off camera so i can make sure i do this properly and then all we have to do is just pop our clip that we took out right back into that slot and then tighten this nut all the way down we'll just wrap up by putting our two cover pieces back on and then we'll be good to go that wraps that up the only thing that we'll have left to do is we'll need to go take this down the road test it out do a test drive on it make sure no check engine lights pop back up for a little bit of a distance and then we should be good from there but we will have to clear the codes i'll just do that with the scanner and then we'll go take her for a rip